So I will hand it over to you, Lori, and we can get started. Well, hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm going to wrap this up and send you all home, hopefully with at least one uh, or two action items from our day together. But thank you, first of all, to Medtronic and all that you've invested into making our virtual jump starts a success, as well as thank you to the Jumpstart Organizing Committee. They asked me to pull together some information. Uh, there's been a lot that has come out this year regarding our online remote uh, gameplay this year, and there has been so much that I've pulled together a bunch of uh, links and topics that if you haven't been aware of them to date, hopefully we'll catch up to speed. And um, I've also called upon, I'm on the first in the Upper Midwest board, and I know that we have other members of the board, including Yoji, Mark Lawrence, Brian Herbst, who have joined us, and there will be opportunities for them to un unmute and, and jump in with some particular information on different topics. So, um, and I'm just happy to, to be here, and uh, here we go. We'll give it a shot. So the overview, um, a checklist, a quick checklist for the 2021 season, register your team, there's a whole bunch of information if you haven't logged into your first dashboard as a team lead mentor or mentor. We'll talk about how all of your students and all of your mentors need to be registered and have signed their first consent form online this year. Encourage you to please pay attention to all of the deadlines. Um, they're going to come up faster than you think, even in our virtual remote environment. We have, um, Yoji will again perhaps talk about the, the FOM diversity grants that are available this year and some upcoming activities and events and things that you might want to take advantage of. So first of all, season updates, team registration, make sure that your team is fully registered, that you have a primary contact, you have an alternate contact, that everybody is background checked, and then also check your dashboard to see if you have a grant. One of the really interesting and fabulous things this year is that our regional sponsors have gone ahead. They want to make sure that every first team in Minnesota who wishes to participate will participate, and there may be grant money that is available to you and your team, and and you need to check your dashboard for that. Um, and if you have a grant, please take it and please register to participate as a team. Some of these early deadlines have definitely passed, but you can always reach out to team support. The uh, email is here and they will take care of you rather quickly. Another feature this year that was just introduced by FIRST is that if you are looking for additional mentors to help your team, um, especially remotely, there is an entire new system. I, I call it, um, you know, mentor matching for, um, for those of us in the first world. But you can set up a team profile. You can set up um, an individual profile. If you would like to mentor teams remotely, you have that opportunity. Or you can bring in new mentors to your team through this uh, new network. Ah, yes, the dashboard. You have to register all of your students and you have to register all of your adults. You really do need to have all of your students registered online this year. The consent form was changed to reflect that the majority of us on Teams are going to be working in a virtual and remote environment. And, and you do have to have a full roster of your students online and everybody has to sign the consent form. There are some really, really good step-by-steps available to us through um, the youth registration system PDF in the resource library. So please take advantage of, of that. So for teams, if you have registered to participate, and you have paid the $2,000 or you've had a, a grant to pay that registration fee, you have access today to the virtual kit of parts. And you will notice that there is a new designation. There is an Adobe Cloud account that is available to you as a team. And you have to designate a, a mentor, an adult over the age of 18, to, to be that Adobe Cloud mentor. And the way that it works is that you do need to go into your invite your team contacts, look for the Adobe Cloud mentor designation, and actually invite that mentor. Could be an existing mentor. It could be one that you're a new mentor that you're inviting to the team. But you have to invite them to the team as that Adobe Cloud mentor. 
And this is the first time that that first has done something like this. So we're all going to be figuring it out together to see how all of these intertwined links actually work to get that person on board. But once they have, once you've designated that person and you've emailed them, they get a link and they then register as that mentor. And if you're an existing mentor, they're now going to have two, two slides, two cards in your, your team roster. And you can decide if you want to keep all of those uh, roles available to you or, or you can remove them if you're a, a lead mentor. But um, that mentor then will have access to the Adobe Cloud. And uh, it's a chance to do Photoshop and, and some of the other Adobe products that can really help your team with uh, creating those submissions that you're going to want to do this year for the, the online. Does that, does that give you access to all of Adobe's like suite of stuff? There is a designated suite, um, but it does include Photoshop and I believe it includes Illustrator. Does it include Premiere Pro? I don't think it does. I think oh. there's, I know, sorry. That's, that's, I mean, all right, that's enough. <laughs> um, questions, concerns, comments, Jeremy, just just send me a note. And I have a, a contact at Adobe and we'll see. It, it's fine. I, I don't edit in Premiere Pro because it costs money. But, you know, yep. if I was like, if I was going to be able to use it for the next year, I'd be like, oh, all right, I might switch over. Take a look. Let us know what you think. That's, I now, I have now voluntold you, you're going to uh, sign in and, let us know all about it. If you look online, it says actually Premiere Pro is part of Creative Cloud. So I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I just don't know yeah. what they ended up finalizing as including yeah. it. So yeah, we'll all be finding out. Um, so one of the other things, because there is so much information that comes out to us as um, through multiple emails, multiple email blasts, different blogs, um, First in the Upper Midwest is, is attempting to, to offer to not just the lead mentor or the alternate mentor, but all of the mentors who are involved with, with FIRST Robotics to sign into a mailing list so that we really can reach as many mentors as, as possible as we go through the season. Um, we are starting with a, an opt-in mailing list and you know via the link and it'll be live um, when it's uploaded through, through Jumpstart you can sign up and, and continue to get some additional communications from First in the Upper Midwest. But I'm going to ask one of our board members, uh, Brian Herbs is online, and we wanted to, to actually do a bit, a bit of conversation with, with you as mentors, and thank you for volunteering because you're going to give us some input on what other communications and forums should we be looking into or perhaps offering so that we can keep our community uh, growing and learning and moving forward together. So Brian, do you want to uh, turn it? I'm turning it over to you. Yeah, so specifically, um, I know a lot of teams already use either something like Discord or Slack um, for communication within their team. Um, and I know there's been a lot of conversations um, in the past about whether or not it'd be worth setting something up like that for all of the upper Midwest region. Um, so I think a Slack or a Discord for uh, mentors and volunteers to kind of collaborate on, you know, we're having this kind of trouble with our team right now. What are other people doing? Think of it kind of like a longer term uh, mentor roundtable type of um, discussion forum. Um, so yeah, we're interested in feedback from people on if that's something you'd be interested in. If you already have way too much Slack and Discord in your lives and don't need more of that, um, or if you have other suggestions on other ways that we could um, collaborate, communicate with all of our lovely teams. So Brian, for our mentors who are now going to be thinking about everything that you just said, would you like them to reach out to you? And if you wanted to put a contact in the chat. Um, yes, I will drop my email in the chat if you want to provide some feedback. Okay, just giving another, another moment. Oh, I'm just learning how to do this. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me throw some more at you. Okay, so this year you may have also heard or seen an email from FIRST that FIRST is no longer going to automatically mail out to all of us our mentoring coach pins. 
um, this is something now that, that you as lead mentors or mentors on the team, you can either purchase individually or for some of you who are not lead or alternate mentors, you can now go to your lead mentor and say, hey, wouldn't it be great if all of us were registered online and all of our consent forms were, were online, you can gift us with our uh, either a year of service pin or a mentor coach pin. They are available now through this new volunteer recognition store, which is online. And um, it also allows for those of our alumni, like Brian, to, if they wish to, they can add an alumni patch to their recognition that first makes available to our very uh, much, much appreciated al alumni who are mentors and volunteers with us. So this year, again, with so many more of us working in a virtual environment, the uh, virtual kit of parts has been expanded and actually released to us ahead of kickoff so that you can go in there now and begin to take advantage of all of the um, products and the um, sponsor donations and, and other things that would really be valuable to your team as even you're working through uh, this, this year. The virtual kit of parts has a full page of information. And I say that because there is a lot of scrolling involved. Um, it starts with the Adobe Creative Cloud, and I did not even get to, to the bottom of it because it is page and page and page of information. It's really important information because so many of the items that are offered through the virtual kit of parts, you actually have to either enter a code or a team number or a password. And what they really are hoping, what we're really hoping is that you don't work your way through all of this and find out you can't even get the items that you were looking for when you first started. I highly recommend um, taking a moment to, to truly go through all of this and, and sifting through it very carefully so that you don't get to the finish line and then have to start all over again. And then for, for those teams, and I'm, I'm looking at, at team numbers as best that I can, it looks like the majority of teams have already registered to participate. Um, the real kit of parts, there is an actual physical kit of parts. These are going to start being shipped to, to us on first teams, either late December, early January. And again, you do want the real kit of parts. There will be items in there that, that will be important to you and your team. So you do want to make sure that everything is uh, signed into on your team dashboard. That includes putting in where it says um, select kit, uh, kit off, kick off kit. You do want to put in a mailing address, shipping address that someone will be there to, to receive that, that box. I highly recommend that it's not a built space or a school location that you are not, read, that you don't readily have access to. Um, I will confess for 1816 this year will be the first time that the kit of parts will actually be delivered to my doorstep. And then I will call people who know better than I do to come over and pick it up. But it is, it is gonna come to my doorstep. Um, there are no live kickoff events. Everything is online and virtual. And you can set it up as maybe a Zoom watch party with your team, or if you are allowed to meet together, you can do it that way, but you are not traveling to a kickoff location. Please do not show up, for instance, at the University of Minnesota. I will not be there to greet you. I will be at home watching online with everybody else. A lot of the information that you would love to have is available through the uh, FRC blog, also known as, known as Frank Merrick's blog. When a new blog post drops, there's also an announcement made via FRC Teams on Twitter. I will be honest, that is how I know when, when the blog has dropped and you can subscribe to it and get, get that in your email or you can maybe follow FRC Teams on Twitter if you don't already do so. And that way you, you'll be up to date with all of the latest information on the FRC program. Okay, now the good stuff. We don't know all the details yet. <laughs> we really don't. But there are three online challenges that, that you and your team can, can take advantage of. There's the, the infinite recharge at home. 
there's the game design challenge. And then coming this year is the first innovation challenge, which is kind of sort of maybe take a, taking a little bit of the place of the uh, entrepreneurship and engineering inspiration challenges. But the things that you need to know is that for these three challenges, if you if your team decides to participate, you're going to be div randomly divided into groups worldwide. And the, the group that you are put in, say, for the robot skills challenges may not be the same group that you're in for the first innovation challenge. So that becomes a lot to keep track of. And um, maybe you are fond of uh, running spreadsheets with your team. And this might be the year to introduce <laughs> shared spreadsheets so that everybody can keep track of who is doing what, when, and for what, what challenge. It's going to be a lot, and it's going to come at us pretty fast. Um, at the kickoff event when there are, they definitely are going to unveil whatever the game manual is for, for the year. And there will be a lot of detail about what these three challenges are going to be. Preliminary information is at this PDF on the first website. And then for the traditional submitted awards, for those uh, teams that are going to submit for chairmen's, that are going to do Dean's List or maybe the Woody Flowers, that's an entirely separate group of, of, of teams. In this case, we in Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota are grouped together as the Upper Midwest region. And each region will be allowed to award a specific number of chairman's awards, Dean's List, and Woody Flowers awards. And we, again, are waiting on first headquarters to release perhaps how many at a later date. But um, we're all going to be grouped together as the Upper Midwest. And um, that's how we will be judged for these submitted awards. There's information about how to do this and the judging process that biggest things with the judging process this year is mentors. You must attend either the chairman's award and or the dean's list interviews. There must be a mentor present online in order for your team to either be interviewed, present, or um, go forward in that particular competition. Um, no guarantees teams that there will be any kind of feedback forms for the chairman's award. And that's another reason why, as they're sorting through how the year is going to progress, they really want to mentor in the room, as it were, in the virtual room. And we really do want you in there. You will be pinged if you're not there. Don't be late. And I know that there are probably questions in the chat that we will get to, but I'm just going to first I'm going to turn it over to, to Yoji Shimizu, who is the Diversity and Inclusion Chair for First in the Upper Midwest. If you would like to, again, make a um, pitch to have teams think about submitting for the Diversity and Inclusion Grants. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Um, so um, let's see. Where can I start with this? I think one thing that's important to note is if you are submitting for chairmans, for example, the executive summary questions have changed. And one of the executive summary questions, which is a new one, is what has your team done over the past three years with regard to diversity, equity, and inclusion? So, um, so it, you know, this is a this is a huge priority for for first uh, as an organization as well as for first in the Upper Midwest. So, just this week, we announced a, a new grant from first in the Upper Midwest. We're calling the Fee FIFO Fum Grant. Um, I want to thank. Um, uh, Sandy Olson, who's on the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, she was really the one that kind of drove this uh, project and, and moved it forward. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to share with you kind of the details of this. So um, this is a grant program where we are interested and excited about providing some money to teams to implement a new and creative project that will make changes to culture and increase the participation and success of underserved, underrepresented, and or vulnerable populations in FIRST Robotics in Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Um, it's important to be aware of the populations that FIRST is prioritizing. So it's underserved, underrepresented, and or vulnerable. It's a pretty broad uh, number of communities. So it's not just uh, gender or race and ethnicity. It's uh, uh, rural areas, it's uh, LGBTQ, for example. Um, so it's it's a large array of, um, of communities that we're trying to reach here and impact in a positive manner. Uh, we provided some examples like, you know, Girls Night in the Shop or um, developing materials in different languages. Um, 
you're holding an online team event and you're bringing in some speaker or there's some costs associated with that. Those are examples, I think, of things that could be done with the amount of money we have available to provide to teams. But we want you to be creative. I don't want you to think outside the box and uh, don't use those as the only examples. So um, really, uh, we're hoping that you will, you will pilot some things and see if they work. And not everything works, right? That's one of the things that we wanna be um, mindful of is that uh, failure is part of the process. So you may come up with a really interesting creative idea and maybe at the end of the kind of carrying it out, maybe it turned out that it didn't work as well as you thought it would, would do, but that's fine. That's a, it's great for us as a community to kind of learn and for your team to learn and grow as well. So, uh, so think creatively and, and take some risks. I think it's sort of what we're, uh, what we're encouraging you to do. The grants are anywhere from $100 to $1,000. Um, uh, you can use that money anytime between the time it's awarded and, and the end of October of this year. And, um, and the application deadline is January 26th. It's a very, very short application process. Um, and we, uh, we intend to kind of notify teams uh, that will receive grants uh, within 30 days after that application deadline. So you can begin working on your project and implementing it. Um, the only other thing I think I should mention is that if you did receive the first equity and access grant, the larger national grant, you're not eligible for this particular grant. So we wanna you know, provide opportunities for as many student uh, teams as possible to, um, to take advantage of, the, of this new funding. So um, I hope that you'll be, um, that you'll think creatively about things where you might be able to, can, we might be able to kind of kickstart a, a project that you thought about and you said, gee, I really would like just a little bit of resources to kind of get this particular thing started. Um, we're hoping that you'll consider uh, applying. So if you have any questions, um, my email address is in the chat and I'd be happy to answer questions now or um, at any time in the future. So, um, so thanks. All right. Thanks, Yoji, for that. Um, okay. So most of us are now virtual and remote. First is keenly aware of that fact, and they have been trying to put together some additional resources for, for all of us on how to put meetings together so that you can also put meetings together with your, your students and have them lead as well. Um, agendas, breakout rooms, polls, games, an all team SWAT, that's a good time. I can highly recommend that. Bringing in um, guest speakers from other teams, perhaps your sponsors, things, anything that you can think of really that you can do remotely to bring excitement into your room, into your meeting. Uh, you will be able to, to inspire more team participation, which is, of course, something that we all want to do. First is also just released this week, brand new. It's about a five-minute overview of doing remote mentoring online. There are tips and tricks and other ways to, to structure meetings and, and bring in and be more inclusive in our meetings. Um, their goal is that most of this, 90% of this is, should be old hat to us by this point, having been living in the, in the virtual sphere, but there are going to be, their goal is that you walk away with one or two new things um, that will help inspire you to, to keep our teams going through this, this very difficult time period. Um, again, I want to highlight, just as we did at the very beginning of Jumpstart, our second annual FAR, First Alumni Reconnect event, will be happening virtually on Thursday, January 7th. There is registration required because, yes, we're all going to be breaking out into to different breakout rooms and we are going to play, play a few games and get to know each other again. Um, as best that we can in the virtual environment. But this is really envisioned as the first of perhaps an ongoing series of alumni directed alumni specific events. And um, again, we're hoping to, to have as many people participate as is possible in our, in our virtual land. And then we will go forward from there. And then truly the last thing I have to say before I stop screen sharing is that yes, folks, we are taking the month of December off from the FUM Minnesota Mentor Meetup. 
unless of course you all clamor that you want to have more of us together online next week. But truly, we'd like to give you the season off as a holiday gift. And we will get back together again on Thursday, January 14th at seven o'clock, where we are going to invite you to bring all of your, this is what happened at kickoff. And now we have lots of questions for them. With that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and Q&A folks, we're going to un unmute. We're going to come back together and um, questions, concerns, comments. And there are 26 of you I see online, so hopefully you have things that we can address. Uh, I am uh, the whole game night thing that you just brought up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to be implementing uh, team game nights for my team every Saturday. Uh, starting tonight, we're actually going to be playing Among Us at 6 p.m., which I've heard is all the rage among the kids these days. Red is sus. <laughs> just I've never that. played it. That's all you got to remember. Red is sus. I'm just saying, I've never played it. I know all about it. I've seen it played. I know all the memes. I've just personally never played it. But we're going to be playing that tonight as a team just because it's an easy, fun game that, you know, they all played. And, yeah. So every Saturday, 6 p.m., I'm going to be doing team game nights with my team virtually just to keep that kind of sense of fun and camaraderie, especially since a lot of them don't know each other, really, because they're all new to the team. So, um, but, yeah, just a thought for other people, too. So we have had um, game nights that have been led by the students and they have organized that and run that offline. In fact, it was a, um, an interesting experience. They ran it for the first time at, at the all team retreat in October and it was popular. So they have been getting together virtually to, to do it again. And then at our, our last team meeting of December, we are likely to do break out into a short version of game night because yes, it, it is great fun um, to do something like that with your team. Not everything has to be serious team business. In fact, I would recommend highly that it's not serious team business all the time. Remember joy of life, people. We have got to somehow have a lot of fun and the more fun that, that we can do together as teams, the more cohesive that you'll be going into the virtual competition season and completing any or all of those online challenges successfully. Highly recommend game nights. Jackbox games are also really easy to do online uh, with multi people and uh, setting up a Minecraft server and letting people play together is another great thing our team has done. So also, can... Oh, sorry, Yoji. Well, there's a game called Scribble that, uh, that people use as kind of like a Pictionary kind of game. That's kind of fun too. Sorry, John. Oh, no. Trivia night in person is a lot of fun. Just hard, it's hard to do virtually. So people are using Google uh, as their guide. Uh, but uh, our, our team had a lot of fun with trivia last season. Okay, this is a really silent group. I know you all have more to ask, more to say. I know you all. I sent I sent you a message <laughs> about the Adobe Creative Cloud Mentor thing. Where, so I mean, I'm on first website looking at the virtual kit of parts, and it says Lead Mentor One or Two designates one Adobe Creative Cloud Mentor in the team's registration account. I'm in our dashboard looking at roster and trying to find every single place, and I cannot find anywhere where it lets me designate anybody as an Adobe Cloud Creative Mentor. So, so if you I click no, on, no idea. well, we can we can have a a fun session. Jeremy, I can I can walk you through it, but it it is it is under your manage manage contacts. Under manage, yeah, I want to manage contacts. Okay, we can go oh, offline. Yeah, no, I'm here. I mean, I can see my list of everybody, and I see myself as lead mentor one, and my other mentor two, and there's nothing that. What if you want to invite someone to the team? You get a drop down box that asks you. What I mean, I can click on invite. Uh huh. And then, or, yep. oh, I have to actually go that route? Yes. Oh, well, that's weird. I just figured it'd be a box to click on like there is for the, like when you, no. so when you do the uh, designated award submitter. No. So I have to basically like invite myself? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes, you do. 
That's silly. Little Let me know how that works for you. But I yes, that is exactly what happens. And then <laughs> those of us who have done this also laugh because it create you'll create another contact card for yourself in, in your team roster. So you'll show up not only as the lead mentor, oh, but so it's like its own separate title, like your own separate title. That's interesting. It so is interesting. The, does the creative cloud lead once you do manage to make yourself a lead? Um, <laughs> do, does anybody know? Does that um, give you personally access to the tools or does it allow you to manage the tools for everybody who wants it on your team? My understanding is that this is a one, one license, one person. Um, and then how you grant access to the team to use the tools, that is an unknown. And we haven't got, we on the team haven't gotten that far. We got so far as to figure out how to get a person designated to actually have access to, to the tools. Now what we do with them, that I, I don't quite know. And I've been in conversation with the Adobe person um, to try to figure figure that out. There is a, a, a longtime veteran volunteer who, who works for Adobe, who has been my main source of information. And truth be told, he is still figuring it out as well. Because the, yes, the idea is that you can somehow use this for your team. And I guess I'd what I'd recommend and what we're doing is my daughter is the co-lead for media imagery. It's just going to be downloaded on my computer. And so she always has access to it. And from that standpoint, so it might be good to have the parent of the person who is uh, media imagery to have access to it. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, since it has to be licensed to an adult, that that may well turn out to be an appropriate route to take for your team. And Jeremy is figuring it out. Yeah, sorry, I'm going through it right now. <laughs> you can tell from my faces. I can tell that you were trying to log in and, and do it. You should get a ping back from no, first. No, I got it, yeah. I, I yeah, so you have to accept it. the invitation. No. No, and I'm then you get a ping emails. from Adobe, yeah. <laughs> and it should happen fairly seamlessly, but you can let us know how seamlessly that works. Well, so I went to Adobe's website and I made an account for myself, like with the whatever education, blah, blah, blah. And I'm hoping that it's not going to give me an issue saying there's already an account with that email address because I just, yes, you know, probably, uh, but they will, but they will also lead you through how to have multiple accounts with Adobe. Right. But like, I have to probably delete this one I made. So mm, that probably not actually, made. but yeah. Okay. Well, we'll find, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I have a feeling we'll be talking later, Jeremy. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and that's okay. Cool. All right. Um, I threw a lot at all of you. Are there any other um, questions, concerns, comments, holiday cooking, baking things that you have a favorite holiday cookie that you could share the recipe with me so I can try it out later this month? Um, questions about any of the submitted awards as well as the, the online challenges? I'm curious think, to I, know. I think a lot more will be coming out after the kickoff and trying to figure out what, uh, you know, it's, we signed up for the blue, I think it's blue twilights are doing the virtual robot parade. And so, you know, our, our team signed up to do that, to get some things going this month, you know, outside of just normal training and zoom meetings. And uh, we're just excited and anxious for, see what this new world is is going to do. You know, I guess I'd be anxious to hear how other teams are organizing their kickoffs, you know, versus since it's probably unlikely that people, teams will meet in person, um, you know, we'll likely be using Zoom and Rooms um, and sign up for Rooms. That's a, what a $50 a month cost, but I think it'll be extremely helpful for what we're trying to accomplish. Um, Anybody else planning on doing anything unique for kickoff? You know, I'm not sure we've gotten that far in our planning yet. Um, 
you know, we, we plan on watching it virtually. We haven't really discussed breakout rooms and some of those kinds of things. I mean, that's traditionally how we've always done our brainstorming. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll actually send people off, you know, mentors and kids into a, into a specific room to brainstorm some aspect of the game or the game challenge or scoring or something like that. But we haven't really sat down yet and thought about, okay, what are we going to do at a virtual kickoff this year? Are we just going to have one big group meeting or are we going to actually try and do rooms? So we'll, we'll see. That's, a, you know, that's something we've got to address. And, and so if there's going to be another mentor meetup, it, you know, prior to kickoff, um, or something on best practice sharing of what teams are doing for kickoff, you know, uh, once people are getting close enough to think about that, that would be extremely helpful, I think, from a dialogue perspective. Um, you know, you know, we too usually have dozens of rooms set up in school that people are all going out into into breakout sessions and tackling different topics. And, and you know, without kind of knowing what's happening from first, it's it's also going to be really hard to, you know, figure out the, the strategy for that. I am not sure yet uh, what their plan is for actual kickoff day. My guess is that we're going to get information um, either right before Christmas or more likely that first week of, of January. And um, I think once we know what, what all of us, they're going to drop a, an email blast or, or a blog about it. And then we can probably make plans from, from there. But my, if there's truly a groundswell of excitement and support and you would like to do a mentor meetup ahead of kickoff, we can certainly make that happen. Um, but I have a feeling, I guess for even our own team, as Mark was saying, we're kind of waiting to know what first plan is for the day. And then we're likely to, to figure it out from there, especially since we know Right now, we're not going to be able to to meet together as a team. We'll all be in our little individual. And as you see, Yoji is upstairs and I am downstairs. We're not even in the same room. I was, gonna, for... I was gonna bring that up, but I was like, ah, no, I'll just leave it. <laughs> yeah, just let that one that. go. No, we <laughs> no, he's literally on the, the room right above my my head, actually. Um he, so but yeah, we're likely to be in our usual spots. Um, on, on kickoff day. The only thing different for me is I'm not going to be getting up at the crack of dawn to go down to the University of Minnesota, but uh, my co-kickoff lead coordinator has promised to show up with coffee and donuts anyway, so that could be exciting. Not too early, though. I'm sleeping in for the first time in I can't remember how many years. It's been a while. I'm curious to know if any teams have decided what... Uh, challenges they're going to do if they're going to do one, two, or all three of them, or are we waiting till kickoff for the most I, part? To that? I met with my team about this back in October. We're doing the virtual game challenge, um, the skills challenge we want to do, um, because we have a functional robot that we competed with last year. So, I mean, we just don't know exactly what the skills challenge entails, but either way, why not? Right? I mean, we have a robot and we know kids want to drive it. So, the only one we're probably not going to do is the, uh, what was it? The third one, though, though, basically what I like to call the chairman's award game where you have to go like design a thing and go out and do a bunch of stuff. It's just way, way more in complex. And with my kids being pretty much all rookies and brand new to FRC, that would be way too overwhelming for them. So I'm not even going to try. I'm going to start calling out names. Jane Peterson, what is uh, Twilight thinking about? Um, Blue Twilight is right now, we um, actually right now we have a grant from FIRST for the equity and access grant. And so we're working on that, trying to do some, basically it's a, uh, STEM camp over Zoom with some underrepresented students. So we have that going on right now. For, um, kickoff, what we're planning to do is uh, wait until we hear the details of the three programs, and then we will have the students let us know what they want to work on. <laughs> we also have our robot, which we've been working on remotely. There was another session that was run um, concurrent to this one where 
um, we had a couple people um, sharing how we are able to remote drive the robot without the people in the same room. So I, I wanted to join that one. One of my other mentors joined it. I actually really want to, I really want to hear about that one. That one sounds <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So we've got that up and running so we, we can have kids driving the robot basically from home. Does someone have to like go and be in the room to turn the robot on and all that stuff I would assume? Yes. So we have a couple mentors who are able to go into the school and get the robot out and set it up in an area where it can be driven around. But then once um, that is done, then it can be um, driven remotely. Is there a latency issues with that? Um, I am not completely familiar with it. Uh, you, we would probably have to connect with the people working on it, but they were able to drive the robot around a course with cones on it. So um, I'm not sure how much of a latency issue there is. So one thing to keep in mind as well with all of these online competitions and challenges is that um, students will be in Zoom conversations with judges, whether they decide to do robot skills or game design, whatever of those online challenges they decide to do. There is a uh, meet with the judges component so that's where uh, students who love to do CAD can CAD forever. There, any kind of visuals are going to be wanted and desired as, as part of those, those judge interviews. But um, that was an interesting component of all of these. So even if you cannot get into your build space and touch a robot, they are still encouraging teams to, to sign up for those challenges because you can sell your robot and show video and show CAD and, and other, other visuals that demonstrate the, the competencies and the abilities of your robot and your drive team. So don't automatically exclude things simply because you can't be on, on site with the robot. Um, the other thing too to take a look at, even if you're a team like Jeremy says, has all new people. I really do encourage all the teams to look at the, the Chairman's Award this year and take a look at the revised executive summaries, the short essays, because if nothing else, that can help you devise other team activities. They're, they're really meant to uh, be very thoughtful questions. And you can come up with team activities and questions and, and forums around that that might encourage a lot of discussion about if you can't do anything right now, but maybe hopefully sometime in the very short future in 2021 when we're allowed to, to leave our homes, um, that we can actually get back out there and, and do a lot of things. So really take the time. I just encourage you to take the time to go through everything with your teams and, and figure out what's gonna work for you in the, the virtual environment. I'll make another comment about that. Um, some of the teams actually will work on chairmen's one year, really in preparation to um, do a, a better job the following year. And what I mean by that is as they go through answering the questions in the executive summary and writing the essay, it's a, a little bit of a brainstorming um, activity for them to say, oh, you know what? we did do this year that fits in this category, we can write this in for this question and um, kind of categorize their things that way. But the other thing is they brainstorm what they could be doing that they're not doing right now. And it really gets them thinking about what the possibilities are. So it's a good activity to do, even if you're thinking that, well, my team isn't really a chairman's team this year, but it, maybe next year, it's still a great opportunity to go through that process this year in preparation for what you might be able to present the following year. All right, well, I have to go put my daughter down for her nap. So I apologize. I'm, I'm leaving a little bit early here, but thanks everybody. On the thanks, innovation Jeremy. challenge, you know, are, are you guys getting a sub team together or what are you doing to prepare 
organizationally to handle this new aspect of the competition. Uh, you know, normally I you know I'd think a awards team might take this on, but they're going to be busy. Uh, so, what are folks doing for the innovation challenge? Well, I'll I'll say from my team, what we've been doing actually is preparing every other week for either the robot skills challenge or the game design. And it's mainly because those we have a view of, we kind of know how to, we, we can plan on that one. The innovation, we're holding that off until kickoff just because it could go completely one way or the other depending on what they, they roll out. So that's the one we haven't really planned for. Yeah, I'd second that. We're, we're, we're in the same boat. One quick comment about the remote running of the robots. Um, we have a mentor uh, that has what we call a Frankenbot that it's just pieced together and we use for software development. And he has it at his home, is able to focus a camera on it. We're not brave enough to have it actually drive. We have it up on blocks, but you can get mechanisms and see motors spin. So especially our beginning programming team, we're really able to benefit from that as it gave them that tactile feedback that they learned how to do this code, downloaded it to a robot and got to see things move while being safe and not tearing up Alex's house. I'm not volunteering yeah, have to, to bring a robot into my house. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Yoji's like, no, <laughs> not going to happen. I would say that we're, we are doing a lot of vision work right now. Um, so they're, they're trying to put some real smarts. They're actually doing some AI work, uh, behind some of the vision processing so they can do better targeting. So that, that's something that's fairly easy to do remotely, um, both for the students and for the camera and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, they're, they're got their nose to the grind wheel trying to make it work. Okay. Um, I know we're almost at about time. Just a couple of, of closing comments. I just put my email address in the chat. Certainly reach out with any questions, concerns, comments, or you're really interested in a particular topic and you're looking for additional resources or, or perhaps people to, to come zoom in to, to one of your team meetings. Um, also can direct you direct you on to, to additional people within First Land who might have additional resources in terms of if you're doing a Chairman's Award or doing a, a Woody Flowers Award nomination. And I will put a pitch in, teams, please, please encourage your students to, to write up their mentors. Um, I think Yoji said it in, in, an, in another session where you can't be that person until you see that person. And it is a, a really, really good exercise for your teams to work on some core values of, of gratitude and appreciation and, and respect and truly, you know, digging into who these people are who volunteer hundreds of hours with your team to, to help these teams be successful and to help the, the, your students be successful. So um, encourage everybody to look at all that is offered this season and maybe try something that is out of your comfort zone. Stretch yourself, stretch your teams, um, try new things. And uh, we are gonna get through this, this crazy year together and we will eventually be able to do uh, Play Live Robots again. We just can't promise you that in the next two, four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks or beyond. So it'll happen, I just don't know when. But until then, folks, I really wish you very happy holidays. Enjoy the time with, with friends and family. Just reach out with any questions um, and we will, we will get you what you need as quickly as you need it. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, uh, everyone.